How I love that. How I Hello, everyone. My name is Mike, and this is the board cyborg. So, a hologram man walks into a bar, or does he? During the 80s, the kings of the low-budget action film was the venerable studio Canon Films. Their films were known for explosions, gunplay, martial arts, cheesy dialogue, and ass-kicking machismo. All things that give me a Cinnaboner. Sadly, when the 90s hit, their glorious reign was coming to an end. However, with the ever-increasing popularity of the straight-to-video market, similar independent B-movie studios began to sprout up. One of those B-movie machines was PM Entertainment. They produced over 150 genre films in a 13-year span, and I'd wager the vast majority of those films are shit-tastic, which gives me hope for the future. All the films I've seen from them focus solely on the action, tossing compelling storytelling right out the window in favor of fondling your senses. PM Entertainment was founded and run by a pair of producer-directors, Richard Pepin and Joseph Murray, hence the PM in PM Entertainment. At first glance, the name of their production company doesn't seem too creative, but I believe it's a double entendre. It's both their names as well as a signifier of the type of films they produce. Trashy, low-budget, late-night genre cinema. They didn't direct all the films they produced, but they did helm a healthy chunk of them, and their styles are formulaic and interchangeable. One of those films was Hologram Man, from 1995, directed by Richard Pepin. This is the second Pepin film I've seen, and after being very disappointed with Cyber Tracker starring the yet-to-impress-me Don the Dragon Wilson, I was naturally skeptical going into this one. Hologram Man has sat on a shelf in the collection for quite some time now, and it's one of those films I've pulled down on occasion, pondered over, but never followed through and watched it. My life is full of poor decisions. Hologram Man is essentially a ripoff of Demolition Man, and the filmmakers had no qualms in letting its audience know this. You gonna stick around? Nah, I got some paperwork to do. I'm gonna let you play Demolition Man all by your lonesome. It also has shades of Lawnmower Man, with its early, ambitiously abysmal attempts at CG. And by ambitiously abysmal, I mean some of my favorite CG ever. Hologram Man is a B-actioner that favors quantity of action over quality, and there is a constant stream of it. Surprisingly, it also has something to say about the seemingly inevitable corruption of political systems. And that is not a joke. The story follows the lame duck, long-haired legend of bottom-of-the-barrel 90s action movies, Joe Lara as Dakota. As a long-haired guy myself, his hair really baffled me at points. Some scenes he has clean, flowing locks, and in others it looks like he's wearing a mullet wig crafted from Roadkill. He looks like Grandmama from Adam's Family. To be honest, Joe Lara has yet to impress me. I just feel like he's extremely wooden and boring to watch. Ironically, the first two lines of dialogue that he has perfectly sum up how I feel about him as an actor. Shit! Shit! So the film opens up with rookie LA cop Dakota who is under the wing of veteran Wes Strickland, played by John Amos. They incompetently shoot at a bunch of bad guys, and a whole bunch of shit blows up with little to no causation. I'm in. Dakota's prowess as a cop immediately comes into question, as it seems he missed the police academy class on taking cover. The two of them are on the trail of the big bad in the film, Norman Gallagher, played by Evan Lurie. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Why does the calorie pear tree smell like semen? Wait, that's not what you were thinking? Hmm. Uh, right, I I know what it was. Norman isn't a very intimidating villain name. Well, Mr. Gallagher doesn't think so either, and he makes it very clear early on that he hates when people call him Norman. You're Norman Gallagher. Don't you call me Norman! And instead would like to be called Slash. Bum, 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 bum. Oh! Because that is much more inventive and much more cool. Slash f***ing Gallagher whose specialty is destroying large fruits with blunt objects. Wrong Gallagher. I assume he chose that rather generic nickname because of the slash or scar on his cheek. I suppose he's fortunate he didn't have a giant pulsating pimple in place of his scar. Giant pulsating pimple Gallagher doesn't quite have the same ring to it. His henchmen are aptly named One-Eye and Eight-Ball. One-Eye has, well, one eye, and 8-Ball, played by Dweebo from Friday, looks like the lost road warrior from the old WWF Tag Team Champions, and has the number 8 written in Sharpie marker on his forehead. I don't get it. 
I suppose if I was a villain in this film, then my clever bad guy name would be Freckle. And I can't forget the B-movie Bob Hoskins and this guy from Blade Runner. Giggles is his name, and his dialogue makes me want to harm the elderly. We call him Giggles. He's a regular genius. I'm an extraordinary genius. Every scene he's in, he hocks up pseudo-scientific babble and feels the need to constantly tout his superior intelligence amongst his henchmen colleagues. I'm hacking my way into the corporate security matrix. And that takes time, <laughs> even for a 160 IQ like me. Slash is introduced in one of the most mind-boggling villain introductions that I have ever seen in a film. Having sex completely in the nude. We literally see his ass before we see his face. After he climaxes, Slash steals the city bus and joins the projectile party with Dakota and Strickland in hot pursuit. It ain't no speed, but the city bus chase is actually pretty well done. And since the film was released during a rather experimental time for CG, it's all done practically. But don't fret. The film does have a healthy dose of laughably bad CG. There's a ridiculous scene that takes a page from Lawnmower Man of all things, since we all know Lawnmower Man was exemplary in terms of utilizing CG in the early 90s. It's a simulation scene that takes place in something akin to a holodeck for police training. It's clearly inspired by some of the early first person shooters of the era, like Doom and Wolfenstein 3D, but it more closely resembles hot ass on a summer day in Hawaii. One effect that isn't pure ass is the holographic effect. It's simple, but doesn't break my eyes and make them want to burrow into my skull. Anyway, the pursuit ends with Slash offing an important political figure of some sort, as well as Dakota's partner. He's then captured and placed in the Hollow Stasis Prison Reformation Program. In the future, criminals are subjugated to a holographic state to serve out their sentence, meanwhile being rewired to become an upstanding citizen upon their release. I'm sure this is all very technical and scientifically accurate, but my stupid simian think sack just can't comprehend any of it. Duh! We jump forward five years and find ourselves in a futuristic LA which looks a lot like the non-futuristic LA. Save for a giant dome which was built over a part of the city due to the dangerous levels of pollution. Boy, does it look like the future. While Dakota is busy transforming into a grizzled, take-no-shit veteran cop, Slash is trapped in holostasis until his parole hearing. Due to the incredible genius of Giggles working to free Slash, as you'd expect, something goes awry during the holographic hearing. Luckily for us, he escapes from his stasis after the committee has determined he is still a menace to society. I grow up to be a straight up menace, Shia. A bunch of idiot guards try to apprehend him, but Immortal combats each and every one of them and is once again free to terrorize the city and overact. Yes. Oh, I feel alive again! And that leads me to one of my favorite aspects of the film, Evan Lurie's performance as Slash. Bum, 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 bum. Oh! He's obviously having a grand old time playing the villain, and he's hamming it up so much that he should have been a butcher. Named Slash. You're sick. Don't ever fucking call me sick! Do you understand me? I may be a little misunderstood, but I am not sick! Hologram Man was my introduction to Lurie, and this dude is fucking crazy. My name is Slash Gallagher, leader of the world liberation movement, father of the revolution that's gonna make this city great again! He tears through the scenery like a rabid lion through gazelle flesh. <laughs> he also has inconceivably long braids, like he's the Stevie Wonder of low-budget action movies. Countless B-movies of the era have forgettable, cookie-cutter villains, but not Hologram Man and not Slash. Oh! This dude calls someone an intellectual sphincter. It's quite amazing to see that such an intellectual sphincter like yourself could actually achieve such a prestigious position. That is f***ing brilliant! I wish I came up with that. Which, I suppose, says a lot about my wishes in life. Slash represents the oppressed, everyday citizens of society and wants to uproot the system and give power back to the people. By killing a bunch of innocent people. I can't believe I just drew a political allegory from Hologram Man. But... It's true. Underneath the constant mayhem and destruction in the film, there's a political message about corruption that you usually don't get in a film of this quality. It's also surprisingly reminiscent of the dichotomy between Batman and the Joker. 
This isn't a joke. Joe Lars Dakota would be Batman, the grizzled, tired police captain who's sick and tired of seeing the city he vowed to protect spiral into a dictatorship with an increasing number of criminals. Then there's Slash, who's like the Joker, the citizen who's finally snapped and radicalized, the wild anarchist who cares nothing for money, who offs those in charge with a smile on his face and wants to see the establishment burnt to the ground. This is not a joke. The only difference being the Joker wants to see the world in flames, whereas Slash wants to nobly give power back to the people by killing a shit ton of innocent people. Hologram Man certainly has something to say. It just says it while gargling a mouthful of broken glass. Aside from the Oscar-worthy turn from Luria's Slash and the surprising political corruption narrative, I ultimately came to this film for one thing. The action. And if there's one thing that Hologram Man has plenty of, it's really, really bad hairstyles. And action. It has more bad hairdos than a Billy Ray Cyrus concert in the 90s, and more action than Elvis's sex life in the 50s. It's ridiculous how many things blow up in this film. It's like f***ing Beiru. And I bet that there's more fire in this film than all of hell. Hologram Man is a constant barrage of incompetent gunfights, pointless but practical explosions, casual car chases, and Evan Lurie karate kicking people into oblivion. This dude is the Tiger Woods of knocking people into conveniently placed tables at long distances. <laughs> He never misses. I honestly love how action heavy this movie is, and it kept me thoroughly entertained throughout its hefty 101 minute runtime. It's utterly impossible to be bored while watching this film. If this film bores you, fuck you. It's surprisingly well paced and moves along briskly due to the surplus of action. But in terms of its technical aspects, it's really nothing to write home about. It's pretty standard in terms of the way it's shot and edited and the music and sound work, but the set pieces look decent and are at least lit in an interesting way considering the meager budget. As to be expected, it contains plenty of shoddy moments in terms of filmmaking, but all they do is enhance the experience. I particularly love this gem where Joe Lara takes off his Mission Impossible mask, then slams his elbow into to the monitor behind him. Keep it rolling. Come on, keep it rolling. Yes! Cut and print. None of the film's many flaws bother me in the least. Quite the contrary, really. After all, I came here to do two things. See shit blow up and watch a good movie. And I'm all out of good movies. To be fair, most of the action isn't particularly well done. It's nonsensical and has little bearing on the narrative itself, but it is entertaining as hell, and it's all done practically. The dialogue is sharp as a butter knife, but when comparing it to like films of the era, it cuts just fine. That's not the manual. What manual? Well, let's go. Some of the lines genuinely made me laugh on more than one occasion, and whether it was intentional or not is irrelevant. The film ends with two grown men with ponytails wearing the tightest white spandex jumpsuits that have ever been manufactured, and engaging in a holographic fist fight to the death. Kinky. My only real issue with Hologram Man is Joe Lara as our hero. It would have been nice to see someone with a bit more presence and charisma, possibly a plank of wood with a smiley face drawn on it, or Christopher Lambert or something. Overall, Hologram Man is an above average B-movie bonanza from start to finish. It's a bad movie, but a fun bad movie that's never boring. And I bet you've never seen a villain play baseball with a shotgun and a floating robot before. Here's the pitch. Wake up early. If we all work together, we can all be successful. And once all the chaos and destruction has subsided, the true hologram man leaves us with some sound advice. What are we gonna do now? Vote. I just want to thank you all for checking out my review of the B-movie masterpiece, Hologram Man. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, 
cool! And if you're new to the channel and want to see more videos like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well as the little bell for notifications. And what is your favorite B action movie from the 90s? I'd love to see what you think down in the comments below and get a little discussion going. Anyways guys, I will see you next time. Bored Cyborg, out. Whee!